Good morning, YouTube. Uh, I'm here in Weatherford, Texas, about to get my day started. Today's topic of the day is going to be remanufactured parts. What do you guys think about them? Stick around and find out. all right youtube hope you guys are having a good day today i'm here in weatherford texas about to get my day started man i wanted to start a little bit earlier but uh, it was one of those days where you know i just just didn't wake up on time you know and Sometimes you just got to do that, you know, just get as much rest as you can. And, you know, thankfully I got time on my load. So, you know, like it's not jeopardizing my load or anything, but well, that's that, you know, um, I did have an issue with my stupid e-log today in the morning. I have that Omnitrax uh, system. I'll show you guys a picture up in the screen right now. It just stayed stuck like that. You know, and I had to like, un like disconnect it from the dash so that it loses the power and it was able to reset. I know that they have like a little reset button on the side, but it wouldn't do anything. It just got frozen. So it's like, by the time this stupid thing started working, you know, it was already like 45 minutes after the fact, like I should have already been driving by then. You know, stupid, stupid e-logs, man. I hate them. You know what I mean? paper log it was just like i would have i would have already been past you know dallas already all right let's see here Okay, just get on the interstate, guys, and we'll go ahead and get into today's topic. Hope you guys are digging the new uh, camera mount. You know, I, I I like I like it, you know, but it's magnetic, and you know, it just I just kind of feel like it doesn't like hold on to it like really really good, you know. It's, it moves a little bit so i need to try to find like some sort of mount that's like it like physically grabs onto the phone instead of it being magnetic because it moves it moves a lot well it doesn't move a lot like as far as picture but like it it, it like slides off the back if any of you, you guys truckers watching the video that also do youtube or just general filming in in, in a truck or whatever and you have a pretty badass mount Hit me up on my comments, man, and put a link in there or tell me which you guys got so I can look into it and maybe possibly grab that one. Because, like I said, this one's pretty good, but, you know, it's not good enough. So I was thinking yesterday, uh, you know, throughout the years, it's... It's really starting, it's really getting hard to find good quality parts, you know, and I think it's for a couple of reasons, you know, I mean, anybody who has an older, an older truck, you know, whether it be a, you know, all the Detroit Series 60 or it might be a Cat 3406Bs or, you know, just any type of older engine in general, you know, knows that to find quality parts, it's, it's, it's pretty hard. I mean, you can find the parts. You know, but not just because you go to the dealer does it mean that uh, that it's a good part. 
even though you're buying it from the dealer because everything's rebuilt now in these days you know there's a very very few parts um that if you look hard enough that you might be able to find uh a, a, a new a new part but it be aftermarket you know and in this day and age you know i mean i'm more inclined to go that route you know even though it's not the original oem manufacturer's part i mean you might be better off with an aftermarket part because at least it's brand new because sometimes these oem parts just they don't they either don't work correctly right out of the box that's happened to me before or or they just don't last as long anymore because the problem is you know like let's just say you buy an injector like you guys saw i bought you know in my previous vlog i mean it yeah it's new it looks brand new and everything but i mean really like how many times has that injector been rebuilt already i mean it might have already been rebuilt you know three four five six seven times like you just don't know I mean, it looks brand new, smells brand new, it tastes brand new. <laughs> you know what I mean, but like it, you know, it's, it's not brand new. And uh, if you all have been following my vlogs, you guys know that I've been having issues with that stuttering, which brings me to my next point. Um, so I, you guys, if you guys saw my previous video uh, where I did the fuel pressure test or whatever, it's actually a little bit better. I mean, it still does it a little bit, but it, it did get better. But, uh, you know, I, I think I'm just going to follow my intuition. And I know it's my injectors, the, the the rest of them that I haven't replaced. It's just, you know, unfortunately right now, I just I just got to keep on. I got to keep on trucking, making some money, you know. I, 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 just, I just I don't have a choice. I normally never run that way. I always I always just fix it and that's it. But, you know, you're talking about. You know, another two, three, four thousand dollars in, in injectors, and you know that's just parts. That's not even labor. You all know that. You know, I wouldn't pay labor. I would just do it myself. But nevertheless, like it's still three, four thousand dollars in parts. You know what I mean? Uh, I really been trying to find uh, to see if they make aftermarket injectors for this particular engine. You know. Uh, I know that there's certain like diesel places that that specialize in injectors that might be able to get me some aftermarket brand new ones, you know. And I know that they're going to be a little bit more expensive, but you know, they they'll last you. Well, in theory, they should last you a little bit more because they're they're new, you know. But then come then the next question comes like even though it's new, like what's the quality of them, you know? So it's it's kind of a tough decision to make you know like should i just go oem and just give it a shot back there again or should i try these you know aftermarket more expensive you know uh injectors because they're new and see how, how how them go you know the last time i replaced injectors in my truck was about five years ago and uh, they have roughly they, they got about a half a million miles on them and there were there were oem remanufactured injectors from the dealer um, so, I mean, I, I guess you could say half a million miles is not that bad, but, you know, I mean, you figure when these engines were, were newer, you know, uh, when they barely came out and stuff, I mean, there was truck going, there, there was trucks going over a million miles without changing injectors, you know, cause those injectors were new. They, they wasn't remanufactured who knows how many times, you know? Uh, so, I mean... I'm really trying to see if I can source some inject some injectors from somewhere. If any of you guys watching that knows uh, of a place that you can get reman uh, not reman uh, aftermarket injectors new, you know, let me know. I'll definitely check it out because that's that's really what I'm targeting. You know, I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, just to give you a, a story about remanufactured parts because it ties in perfectly into what we're talking about today. Uh, so my truck had roughly like about my truck right now, as it currently stands, has one, one point one two nine million miles on it. Those are ori original miles to the truck, and on the engine rebuild, it has like about probably like three hundred and something thousand. But the injectors, I had replaced them them at seven hundred thousand, and you know, so the other five hundred thousand would be current, right? But at Right around the same time, around that 700, 
thousand range or so, I went ahead and replaced the original turbo that was on my truck. There was nothing wrong with it. It was working perfectly fine. There was there was nothing wrong. Again, I'm just an OCD guy, and I was just being precautious and 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 you know try to be preventative. You know, I went based off just you know it has a lot of miles, and that's one part that you don't want it to fail when you're out here on the road. So, I I removed my turbo that was at one point new with the truck. So I went to go get the the turbo at the at the dealer, right? So I put it back, I put it on or whatever, and all I can tell you guys is being preventative bit me in the ass. It was a big mistake. After a couple of months, I started having actuator problems. To where the truck, it would get to the point to where the truck would shudder really, really bad, or it would get to the point where it just wouldn't even accelerate. It, it would idle and it would stay on, but when you would when you would give it fuel, you would give it gas, pedal, however you want to call it, uh, it wouldn't even accelerate. And it would like cut in and cut on like really bad. And uh, I went through so many test procedures and, you know, I, I tested out the actuator. I removed the actuator. There's like a little lever inside there that you can move back and forth and it shouldn't be binding up. And it was just giving me nothing but issue after issue after issue. So I finally got fed up and I called the dealer and I was like, you know what? Uh, Due to the fact that it was just a couple of months, it had like about like a year, a year warranty, I believe, or so, or six months or whatever, whatever warranty it is that they gave me. And I was like, you know what? You guys need to make this right because th this turbo is giving me nothing but issues. So I had to do the whole job again. And, you know, to replace this particular turbo in my truck, it's not, it's not just, a, you know, a walk in the park, you know, like it's not hard. It's just a big pain in the ass. You got to remove a lot of stuff. You know, because it's got coolant lines, oil lines, and all that crap, you know, and electrical stuff. So I finally took it off. I went to go get a, another turbo, put that bad boy on, and it kept on doing the same exact thing. Same thing. You know, and this was like, you know, they kept, they kept on giving me the runaround. Well, maybe it's your ECM, or maybe it's your wiring. I was like, I know it's not. Because, you know, prior to that, I had, I had put a new ECM on my truck. Uh, and when I mean new, again, it's remanufactured. And I replaced that ECM because it just stopped working. Like that was nothing related to the turbo. So when I replaced my ECM, uh, I had put brand new wiring harnesses. You know, all, 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 everything in the engine compartment as far as wiring was new. You know, so I was like, I know that it, I know that it wasn't that because uh, when I had the first turbo. Uh, like the first reman that I replaced turbo, it had the old wiring. And then when I replaced it with the second one, it was with the new wiring and it was doing the same thing. You know, so it got to the point where they were just, you know, like, like whatever, you know, it, it's not the turbo. So what ended up happening was the turbo veins uh, that the actuator moves, when you would, when you would test that lever, well, obviously, when you're testing it, the, the turbo's cold, right? Because you're not going to be you're not going to be messing with the turbo when it's super hot. It would move perfectly fine, but when you would heat it up, and and your metal expands or contracts, then that's where the problem was, to where those veins were getting stuck. So, you know, that's the reason why it was giving me the problem. So, to make the long story short. Uh, I got online and I was able to find a website and they had several different options. So they had a remanufactured uh, option to where they, you know, remove everything, inspect everything and replace everything. You know, the only thing that's original on the turbo itself is just the housing, but pretty much the turbine and bearings and all that stuff is new. And then they have, they, ha they would sell other turbos that were just repaired. So let's just say your, your, your bearing seals failed. They just replaced the bearing seals and that's it. Then they had this other option where it was brand new, never used. So I actually called called these people up there in California and I was very specific with the guy. I was like, I'm looking at the brand new turbo. It's not a brand new remanufactured turbo, right? It's brand new, never used turbo, correct? And he's like, yes, that turbo 
is brand new from the factory. It's never been installed in a truck. It's it's just, it's brand new, just like when you buy your when, when the truck was brand new and it came with the turbo. That's the way it is. So, I ended up spending spending almost five thousand dollars. Bear in mind that the turbo at the dealer, the Reman one, what that was I think about like twenty seven, twenty eight hundred. So I put that turbo on, and here two years later, no problems. She's running perfectly, beautifully fine as far as like the turbos in concern right and she's been working she's been working great ever since like my problems went away so that tells me right there that yeah those reman those reman parts look new and you get them from the dealer oem but the, the, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be good parts you know and that's what's really frustrating to us guys that have older equipment you know a lot of these a lot of these engines um you just can't find new parts no more. I mean, there's certain things you can find brand new, right? Like if you're gonna get like a rebuild kit, for example. Well, the the pistons and the sleeves and all that stuff, like that's new. Maybe not even the pistons. Maybe the pistons are used, but the 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 uh, the piston rings and the sleeves and you know the liners and all that stuff, like all that's new, you know. Uh, like so, there's certain things that you can get, like bolts and stuff like that, but like. For example, like with this head, when I when I rebuilt my engine and and I and I and I bought the head there at the dealer, I mean, it was a new head, but it was remanufactured. It wasn't brand new, you know. And they sell these. You know, my problem with that is that, and I think you'll you'll agree, is you want to sell these parts at a premium just because they're from the dealer, OEM, reman. But then when you get them, they're garbage. And then when you try to like, you know rectify the situation what, what's you know for them to make it right they act dumb like i had to fight with these guys just for them to give me another turbo they didn't want to give me a turbo they wanted me to buy another turbo then they were going to ship that other turbo to get tested and if it tested back then they would give me my money so it was going to be a 50 50 thing i was going to end up buying another turbo bear in mind i had barely bought that first one like you know three or four months prior to that and it's like, now you want me to spend another $3,000 on another turbo and take a chance for you to tell me, you know, oh, it, it tested good. We're not going to give you your money back. You know, so that's why I just said, you know what? I found this one that was $4,000 something dollars. Or I, I can't remember. I know it was between four and five. Uh, and I just said, you know what? I'm just going to pull the trigger with that one because at least that one's brand new, never used. And problem solved. You know, so it just gets... It gets very, very, very frustrating to find quality parts uh, for these trucks, you know? And you know why they do it, you know? Can can Detroit still produce parts? Absolutely. You know, you know that they got these design drawings and everything in their archives, you know? They could make new injectors, new turbos, or, or whatever parts they control, right? Because I know that sometimes uh, parts are made from different manufacturers like... Uh, the reason I was able to find that turbo brand new is because that one's not made by Detroit. It's made by Hoslet. So I was able to get in contact directly with Hoslet and get it directly from them for this engine. You know, the same thing with the injectors. You know, they used to be, I think, uh, Detroit, and then they went from Reliabil, and now I think that they're Bosch. So I'm trying to see if I can source them directly from the people who make them so that I can get new ones. You know, but... But you know what? They do that stuff on purpose, and it's just for the same for the same thing, so that you just continue to go back and continue to buy parts. Because these, most of the time, these reman parts are, are garbage. You know, uh, another 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 one to, the, that they, that's giving me problems before the EGR valve. I mentioned before in my previous videos that that EGR valve has gone off to me. You know, it, it's it's it stopped working before in the past while I'm rolling. Well, I carry an additional extra one where I just ate the core. I, I paid for the core and I just kept the other one. And when one goes bad, then I just go and exchange it for another one, right? My EGR valve went bad on me back, I think, in, I think it was like October or November, somewhere around there, okay? It went out on me in Midland, Texas, okay? And it was on a, on a Saturday. So everything was closed. Well, because I, ha I had prior prior uh, gotten prepared for a situation like that, I had another one in the truck. 
you know, I tested out the other one. It just, it didn't want to work. I cleaned it. I couldn't get the other one to work. But I wasn't stressed out because it was literally four bolts, a connector, and you're off. You're off to the races again. You know, no problem because I had it there in the in the truck. Well, when it came to re to replace the the old one because I wanted to keep another new one here in the truck, right? If I hadn't had that EGR valve in my truck, I would have been down till uh. I would have been down to like about the 25th of January. And why do I say the 25th of January? Because on the 25th of January, the EGR valve that I had ordered barely came in. So I I was barely able to replace the one that wasn't working to with uh, another, new, you know, remanufactured new part as a backup for here in the truck. That's crazy. Like, I don't know about you guys. And I, and I can almost vouch for most truckers out there owner operators or small company i can't sit for two three months to wait for an egr valve to get in because that's a, a, a critical part w without that part the truck won't reach in and it'll get to the point where i can't use it no more like i don't have the luxury of sitting two three months waiting on the part and i looked at junkyards and everything and like, i couldn't find anyone i was able to find some online you know but because people know that they're in shortage you know i mean the part cost me 400 i think it was like 450 bucks or something like that it was somewhere around there okay and uh they wanted like 17 1800 for one online and bear in mind they're all they're doing is just you know price gouging because there's a shortage and they're selling you a part that's remanufactured because it's not new and you they, they want 17 1800 dollars for them like they're crazy but again, it gets to the point, you know, like if you can't find it, if I hadn't, if I hadn't been prepared with an EG, EGR valve on board right now, you know, back, back in you know October or whatever, like I would have been done. Like imagine how much lost wages and, and, and revenue you lose and all that time, you know, like it's, it's crazy. So. That's my rant on uh, remanufactured parts. You know, I mean, it's just it's it's getting harder and harder and harder to to get good quality parts, and you know, it's it's for the reason that the, for everything, you know, it's just money. It's just they keep you hooked like on drugs. You know, just continue to buy, uh, continue to buy parts and parts and parts and parts, and also it's like. You know, with everything that's going on in our, 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 our government today, they want to push everything to more uh, eco-friendly trucks, you know, and eventually it will get you away from trucks, you know, and these new engines, you know, the DD-15s and, you know, X-15s and, you know, all the other Packard newer engines, Volvo engines and stuff like that, you know, they have stricter emission stuff, you know, and, and with those trucks, you know, I think with those trucks, you have the ability to buy reman or new trucks because those are like the current you know the current engines and stuff like that you know this guy keeps slowing down and speeding up man golly um so i i you know they're just trying to push you to just get newer new, newer equipment you know and having a, having a, a paid paid off truck with with an older piece of equipment on there, you know, has its its advantages and disadvantages, you know. And the advantage of it, particularly for me, is I pretty much know how to work on my truck. Like almost everything, you know, not quite everything, but almost everything I know how to do it. Um, uh, you know, the 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 not having the truck payment, you know, but sometimes you know you're gonna have to spend money on on the truck to keep it running good, you know, and I've said it before, you know, I mean, before I started doing YouTube, <laughs> you know, my truck was running good. You know, I had been running good for a good while, you know, with the exception of just a little clamp or a hose here and there, a wire or something, you know, nothing major. And long and behold, I started, you know, sharing my journey in trucking and this stupid thing decided to start having so many problems, man. You know, so, you know, ever since it, from the very first video up until now, you know, it's it's probably been like seven, eight thousand dollars just in parts. 
That's just in parts. That's not in labor. You know, it's just it's it's tough right now with fuel and the shitty ass rates, man. You know, they want you to just move for free practically. You know, and you know, you know, it's hard to maintain your truck and have it good. You know, and so that you can continue moving forward, you know? And I think a lot of owner operators are like in the exact same shoes that I am right now. Like right now I know that those injectors, you know, eventually they're gonna need to be replaced. Like if it's still working good and everything, yes, it's, it's still working good and everything. Like not the way it's supposed to be. And because I know how my truck originally runs, but good enough to where I can continue rolling so that I can make some money so that I could eventually replace the injectors, you know? But you know, one of the big, biggest ways that I know uh, when something's wrong with my truck is like for the last probably five, six years, you know, I've been using an app and I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you guys one day because I'm not sure if I can share it or not. Still learning YouTube, guys, remember. Um, but I monitor my, my fuel mileage there and I think I've already, I already have probably like 800,000 miles since like from day one till now that I've started using it. So it gives you, you know, your 60 day average, 90 day average, yearly average, lifetime average, your cost per mile on your fuel and all that stuff, right? Uh, so yesterday I put fuel here in Weatherford and normally when I put fuel there, I'm usually right around 6.1, 6.5, 6.7. You know, it ranges between there. It just depends on how heavy I am or not. But here lately I've been getting 5.4. 5.2 5.5 you know and it's with the same load so that tells me right there that, 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 that there's something wrong you know and it has you know I, I do good maintenance guys you know I put you know good engine oil on there you know pure synthetic I change my oil every 15,000 miles you know and you know, I grease her up and I'm on top of her, her fluids and her antifreeze and all that stuff. You know, I, I give it very, very good maintenance. Um, you know, her air filters and all that stuff. And but ever since I started noting it, I started noticing that little bit of stuttering when it's regening. You know, it's just. Uh, that's when the, the fuel mileage started going down. And what I think is going on, and I, I know I, I know I keep going around in circles, and I'm sorry, but you know, just trying to think about what I need to tell you guys here while I'm rolling down through Dallas, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I think the plunger part on the injector is what's going out. You know, because there's two parts of it. You know, there's the electronic uh, solenoid. You know that which meters the fuel and then there's the plunger which actually pressurizes the fuel that goes into the cylinder you know it being a mechanical plunger your computer is not going to detect that it'll detect it in your idle speed balance but it's not going to detect like okay your plunger is bad the only time you're ever going to get a check engine quote on this particular truck you know on newer trucks those don't have a plunger those are our common real high high pressure fuel injection systems to where the injector is just in the injector bore and it doesn't connect to the cam at all. It just uses nothing but pressure. So those are more advanced. You know, you can monitor more parameters on it. You know, you can do a fuel a fuel system integrity check. You can monitor what the rail pressure is at. You can monitor what the actual pressure in the injector is at. You know, it has more telemetry that you can check versus these older engines. You know, uh, and I and I've thought about. You know, sometimes maybe, the, you know, getting a, a, a newer truck, maybe with a DD-15 or whatever. And the reason why I say DD-15 is because I know that engine as well. Uh, and they're good engines, but they can be, they can be, they can be very problematic if you're not on top of them. You know, they're notorious for, for blowing up, man, for low oil pressure. You know, because the stupid pickup tube on the DD-15 is plastic. I don't know why that'll just make it metal like before. So... The plastic brakes or the o-rings give out you know and and you lose oil pressure and it destroys your engine you know but they're they're very good on fuel mileage you know i have a couple of buddies that have those trucks and sometimes they get eight nine miles to the gallon like even when my truck is running perfectly 
beautiful, sexy the way she's supposed to be, right? You know, the maximum I'll get is 7.25, 7 to 7.25 miles to the gallon. That's the maximum that I'll get. You know, but these guys, you know, I mean, they're getting seven, eight miles, nine miles to the gallon, and that's loaded. You know, so you're talking about a two to three miles per gallon difference. That's a huge amount of money that you're saving. For any of you, guys, for any of you of my audience that is not watching, uh, I'm sorry, that it's not in the trucking industry. You know, these trucks usually get between, you know, six, seven miles to the gallon. Like I said, the newer ones get nine miles to the gallon. So when you're going from, you know, let's just say from six to seven, it may not, it may not seem like a lot, like, well, big deal, you know, one mile per gallon, you know. But when you're dealing with, you're filling up a 200 gallon tank or a 300 gallon tank, that difference is significant. Like you, you, you're talking about, it might be an additional two, you know, 150, $200, $250 difference in fuel cost when it comes time to fill up. And you're, you're filling up multiple times, uh, you're filling up multiple times a, a, a week, you know? So it's a very, very huge difference. You know, so, but that's pretty much what I got for you guys today. Uh, as far as uh, remanufactured parts, if I missed anything or if you guys can think of anything else to let me know about what you guys think about reman parts, uh, let me know. I'm going to get through this stupid traffic here in Dallas. You know, when I was going to go through here, there was no traffic, but stupid e got stuck. So it took like an hour away by the time I got it squared away. But it's supposed to be more efficient, right? It's supposed to save you more time. It's supposed to be better for us. All it is is just government control. That's all it is. It doesn't make you safer. It makes you less safe. Because you're constantly fighting it. But I'll leave that topic for another day. So, uh, I don't know if this is going to be the end of the video. If it is, thank you for watching. And if not, we'll go to the next scene. It's times like these I wish I went to school. But no, I'm here dealing with stupid Dallas traffic. I've already been here 45 minutes. Going five miles an hour. Golly, man. But it's part of trucking. Uh, it's no sense in getting mad about it. Because it ain't going to make it go faster. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know.